Our guest in this segment is the Secretary of State of West Virginia, Mac Warner. Mac, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Great to be with you guys. Great to have you with us. I think this is the first time we've spoken with you on the program since May the 14th in the aftermath of uh, the election here. Mac, you're, you're, uh, now that you're about a month or so removed from that, your reaction to that result? I'm uh, breathing easier, living better, <laughs> uh, eating healthier. <laughs> uh, I, it's kind of like, you know, if you ever have kids playing soccer or football or something, oh, yeah. you, you want them to win. But when that season's over and they've lost that last game, there's kind of a sigh of relief. <laughs> and uh, you're not on the road all the time. And uh, that's uh, that's my life right now, except that today's topic is the business and licensing. And, uh, it is the busy time of the year for that. It, it is. And I promise you I will get to that in just a moment. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about that that race first because we haven't spoken about that. And the uniqueness sure. of the fact that your brother potentially will be succeeding you as Secretary of State. Obviously, he has to win in, in November. Uh, but uh, this is a fairly unique situation in which you could be succeeded by your brother. Yeah, it's uh, kind of neat that uh, he chose that path and that the people responded and uh, in a very strong fashion. So uh, we'll see if that's the, the case. But uh, whoever it is, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, turning the reins over to them and uh, sharing all the positive stuff that we got accomplished and have in place uh, to make it, uh, I think, an easy transition for whoever takes over. What will you be doing next year at this time, Mac? Any idea? I don't think my time is up. I don't think they're ready to put me out the pasture yet. So uh, I'm sure something will come along. The good Lord has uh, you know, something in mind for me. And just a matter of, I have about six months to figure that out. Mac, this is John. Could you have stayed on if you wanted to? Were you term limited? There was There is no term limits for okay. the offices other than governor. So uh, Secretary of State, Attorney General, Auditor, uh, there's no term limits. So that, that has been discussed, and I support term limits, which was part of my reason for uh, not the main reason, but uh, one of the reasons that I made that choice to make the run for governor. I think two terms is um, is good. I think if they did a term limit, I might go for three, or you know, advocate for a 12-year uh, max. So, like the U.S. Senate has six years terms, I think two of those would be adequate, uh, and then the two-year terms for congressmen, six of those. So, I, I think in that eight to ten or eight, ten to 12 years is an appropriate time for somebody to serve in public service and then either move, go back to the private sector or move on to another uh, job. Uh, change is good, and I've learned that in the military. Uh, sometimes it's a little frustrating. You felt that just about the time you're really getting competent, in my case, as a prosecutor or as a defense counsel, then they would move you to the next uh, higher level. But that change is good. Uh, one, it broadens your perspective personally, but it's also good for the offices for new ideas to come in. I know I changed quite a few things when I came into Secretary of State. I suspect the person that comes after me will do do that as well because they have their life experiences that they bring to the office, and that's good for the state. It's good for the office. Mac, the House of Delegates released a uh, statement today in which they are endorsing Patrick Morrissey for governor. I don't think that's a big surprise. Uh, have you made any endorsements for the office yourself? Well, my job as Secretary of State is the chief elections officer, so I've never endorsed anybody uh, from Trump down to my wife ran for House of Delegates, and I didn't endorse her because I have to have not only the reality but the perception of uh, fairness and independence. And if you've endorsed somebody, then it's hard should there be a, an election challenge or a recount or something that I would need to decide on. Uh, that endorsement, I think, would cause you to, in with integrity, to have to recuse yourself. So I have not endorsed uh, Patrick Morrissey, but I do support the Republican ticket, the conservative values, uh, the way that the legislature is going about changing things to make this state more business friendly, those sorts of things. And so uh, I, I support that conservative agenda. That's a good answer, sir. And before we move, I don't know if we're about to move off or not. Yes, we before will. we before we do, as a voter, I just want to tell you, I really appreciate the fact that you ran such a clean campaign. I don't know if that, if that cost you in the long run. Uh, it, it, for it, obviously, the outcome didn't go the way you wanted to. But as a voter, I really did appreciate the fact that you ran a clean campaign. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I've had that comment from a number of people, and uh, that's what. Uh, I think most people are looking for is just a positive, this is what I intend to do for the state uh, without the, the negative attacks. And uh, that does get frustrating when all you do is hear the same thing on the radio, TV, whatever, um, taking 
tearing somebody else down. I just want to uh, say this is what I intend to do and what my plans are for the state. I really emphasized education, and I still think that that's the main thing that we need to tackle in this state to uh, you know, get our kids to stay here and have them prepared for the workforce. Uh, so I uh, don't want to go back on the campaign pitch, but uh, education is, is my – uh, I just feel it in my soul. We need to fix that in West Virginia to uh, to be viable in the future. Mac, June thirtieth is the deadline for businesses to file their state required annual report. Uh, maybe you could address uh, the urgency of this as we are up to June twenty five now, and what some of the consequences might be if you are out of compliance on this. Sure, this is the week, um, June thirtieth, which is Sunday, this coming Sunday is the deadline to register your businesses. And just a few statistics so people get the idea. This is the week that most everybody starts to pay attention and gets their their filings done. So right now we're in decent shape. We've had about 58% of the businesses throughout the state already registered. This is their annual reports, their annual uh, update of if there's an address change in the business, a corporate officer changes, uh, those sorts of things. That's what the code requires people to file an annual report so that the rest of the people in the state uh, know who the officers are, where it's located, if you need to mail somebody something, a mailing address. Those are all the things that the state uh, code requires businesses to file annually. So right now, the good thing here in the state is we have more businesses than ever before. So my office is keeping track of 149,740 businesses, right at 150,000 businesses uh, we keep track of and so that's what we want everybody to respond this week it's very easy go to wvsos.gov and you can look at the business and licensing division uh, the, the tab there click on that and it's a real easy report you can fill it out in about five minutes it only costs twenty five dollars and uh, it, it's that easy but you have until sunday to get that done that's why it's important we're talking about it this week i really appreciate you bringing this to everyone's attention. So if you're a business owner or you work for a business, remind that owner, let's get that annual report done this week. If I own four different restaurants, do I have to file one of these for each restaurant? Or if I'm the listed owner of each of all four, is one fine? It depends on how the, org- the uh, business is organized. If all those fall under one business entity, then you would just have the one. But if each of them has a different uh, business entity. So you have corporations, you have LLC, you have partnerships, uh, sole proprietorships. Each one of those has a different legal um, uh, ramification as to how it's organized. So you really have to look at how that uh, each of those businesses is organized. If they fall under one umbrella, then you will only have one report. But if, they're, if they have different owners, then uh, you would have different reports. And what are the consequences, Mac, if I miss the deadline? Glad you asked that. It's, it's a $50 uh, fee that is charged, so it's twice what it would be if you just go ahead and do it this week. Uh, and I'm required to uh, impose that uh, that late fee on people. And um, like I said, it, the, the neat thing here, folks, is you can do it yourself. It is that easy. You do not need a third party. And one of the it's not necessarily a scam, but one of the things that people get taken advantage of is sometimes you get these very official-looking envelopes. It looks like it came from my office or some other government office, and it really isn't. And they ask you to pay $125 to, to do your business renewal, and you really don't need to do that. It's like paying somebody to fill up your car. You're fully, fully capable of putting gas in your car yourself. No reason to pay $100 to have somebody uh, do that for you. So if you get something that looks – like it came from my office, if it doesn't say West Virginia Secretary of State, then uh, I would suggest that uh, you might be getting taken advantage of. Now, Mac, I just actually went online <laughs> to do this because I didn't this didn't I used to get an email from your office to do this? We are uh, people used to get letters, and we're trying to reduce that number of letters. We've really modernized the business. Ninety eight percent of the businesses that uh, you know re- renew do it online and so we've really gone to the online process and we have sent out emails to people to remind them uh, of that but that's if we have that email address if they've provided that 
If you haven't, then obviously we can't send you the email to remind you. Okay. Well, I'm 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 glad we're having this conversation. <laughs> Did you you have you not filed your report yet? Well, I I have filed them in the past, and I, I just um, it feels like a long time since I got an email reminder. Would I have gotten one within the last like three months, maybe? Probably should have. Okay. I'll check with my office. Oh no, no, no I don't I don't I don't need you to to give special favors. I'm just trying to uh, because it's asking for a. Um, uh, I just I just dumped the um, the website. It's asking for an account ID, and I don't remember having one of those. And I, again, I'm not asking you to take care of that. I'll, I, I will, but it feels like the system has changed. Well, and that's why it's, again we're, we're having this conversation so everybody can check and make sure that they've got theirs filed, um, and that this is the deadline. And again, about forty percent of the businesses will be doing it this week. Um, and then if you don't. Then we put you into that separate file that says, that, you know, you're, you're one, you're late. We'll send you the late notices and that sort of thing. Uh, but then after three years, then you're removed from the list. So uh, it is important to, to keep your filings up to date. And then I have the honor of becoming part of the budget surplus, right? With the <laughs> kick, kick your 25 <laughs> bucks in, baby. Hey, uh, Max, so 40% have not yet filed. If they all go online at the same time and try to file, can your system handle that? We have had some difficulties in the past with that, but uh, that's why I'm glad we're talking about this on Tuesday and not necessarily Friday. Um, let's let's get uh, everybody filling out those forms and uh, or sending those, uh, getting online and, and sending in those, uh, those filings so that we don't have that system crash. If I don't do it by the end of the month and I'm out of compliance, can I still legally operate my business? Yes, you can. Uh, it's just you'll get the notices that you're late. And, uh, and the, the problem is if you don't do it for three years, then we can remove you. Very good. Now, uh, is there anything else on this that you needed to make sure we covered, Mac, before we move on to something else? Not that we the, – the main thing is just this deadline is this Sunday. It, you can mail it in. You can download the form and fill it out and mail it in. But it's like an election. You have to have it postmarked by June 30th, for, or it, it will be – if it's received after the 30th uh, without a postmark, then uh, it will be considered late. So, no, that's the, that's the only thing. Just wanted to uh, have this discussion and make sure everybody – all your listeners are informed so we don't have to – do any uh, late uh, late charges? Are there any categories of businesses that are exempt from doing this? No, we also keep track of charities and nonprofits. So anybody who's operating in the state uh, is supposed to file an a report. All right, Mac, you have a, another election coming up before your term is uh, finished in West Virginia as the Secretary of State, and that's a big one. That's the general election which will be uh, from the president on down. Uh, what do you need to do between now and November to make sure that these elections are safe, secure, valid, and uh, efficient around the state? The, the interesting thing about elections is that there's always something going on. And so right now, the, the clerks, they're meeting um, in uh, Morgantown uh, on Wednesday, it's, it's an auditor's conference, but they'll be talking elections as well. Uh, my staff is actually presenting some of the, the classes on Wednesday. And then we moved into, uh, you know, by August, if let's take Joe Manchin, for example, if he wants to run, he's got to get a certain number of signatures and get those uh, uh, provided to the office. And then the counties need to verify those signatures and that sort of thing. Then you move into uh, the ballots, making sure. So by then, uh, we've got to have, you know, the if there's going to be a mountain party and a, you know, one of the other uh, smaller parties have their conventions, they got to get those names into us, and the, then they start working on the ballots, getting the ballots prepared. Uh, and we're always looking for poll workers. They're always uh, testing the machines, getting the, the machines ready, that sort of thing. So the clerks are the ones that are very busy. The, the, the biggest emphasis is that the clerks run these elections. They simply report to us uh, in the Secretary of State's office, and uh, we compile things. And so our job right now in the Secretary of State's office is one of supervision, training, uh, equipment, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, talking with the clerks, we had 17 new clerks that were elected you know, two years ago. 
and um, so this will be their first big general election, and um, we're, we're always training them, making sure that they are up to date on procedures, equipment, uh, poll work training, all that sort of thing. Yes, ours was one of those here in Berkeley County. Tony Petrucci was uh, voted in as the new county clerk. Uh, bit of an off-the-cuff comment, but have you noticed less drama coming out of Berkeley County in in, in the last two years there, Mac? We, we like it when we don't hear from clerks. That's a good thing. <laughs> in elections, you don't want to be on the front page as an administrator. You want things to go quiet. And uh, so, yes, it's nice to have... Uh, uh, things not on the front pages of newspapers or being talked about on talk radio. Are there any active investigations of any of the candidates who ran for office out of Berkeley County in this last primary, Mac, that you're allowed to comment on? No, the one that we're having uh, that's ongoing is, is in Mingo County, and uh, that will be in front of a judge in the middle of July. So uh, that's the one that has got the most interest at the moment in the state. Uh, the rest of the state's pretty quiet, so we're pretty pleased with the way things went. So to verify, nothing active or pending out of Berkeley County? I can't verify that. Uh, sometimes I am kept out of the process so that I don't say something that uh, I shouldn't. The investigations um, uh, are done independently within my office, and it's only brought to my attention when either one I ask about it. If you had a specific case you want me to, to know, uh, you could ask and I could find out from my investigators. Uh, I can't really talk about the investigation. Sometimes I, I can't even talk that there is something under investigation, and, and that's by state code. Um, so um, if you had a specific case, let me know, and I can find out what there is and let you know what I'm able to talk about, but uh, I'm not aware of anything. I'll answer that. I can do that. Thank you, John. Now, we've talked a lot here about how abysmal the turnout was for elections here in Berkeley County and then into Martinsburg uh, the following month. From where you sit in the Secretary of State's chair, was it overall a lethargic turnout for the primaries in, uh, in West Virginia? I will say I was a little bit surprised at the low turnout in Berkeley, but uh, I can't. I won't say that it's abysmal because I think it was pretty um, representative of, of an off-year election. Um, you typically have the reduced numbers, and that's what we saw throughout the state uh, at 30 to 35 uh, percent. I think Berkeley may have dropped down into the 20s, but high 20s. But um, uh, that's just the nature of, of the primaries, and it's not just West Virginia. You can see this across the nation. We would all like to have uh, more people. Uh, turn out that that's the candidate's job and the campaign's job. It's not the uh, clerk's job or anybody else's. Uh, it's a matter of interest. And right now, there's it's quite a bit of disgust or displeasure in America. And so people voice that by, by not going uh, to the polls. Um, you know, so uh, what, what's going on nationally, I think, is reflected uh, by the turnouts here in West Virginia. What kind of uh, turnout do we usually see uh, in, in November during a presidential year? You, you pretty much double that, get into the 60s. West Virginia is usually in that 60 to 65 percent. 70 percent is somewhat known as the gold standard. If anybody gets 70 percent, we've only had a couple counties that routinely get that uh, in the state, uh, and only about three states typically hit 70 percent turnout. So. Um, I'd say the 60, 65% is pretty much the average across the U.S. in a general election, uh, especially the presidential years. Secretary of State Mac Warner, our guest here on the program. I got a text from Dr. James Cook, who was recently appointed to the Jefferson County uh, Commission, as that situation is always fluid there. Do you have any comments on that whole Jefferson County situation, Mac? I do not. Um, that has been contentious, but uh, no, I don't have any comments on that one right now. What do you have to accomplish between now and the end of your term? Obviously, there's a major general election there as well, but is there any other uh, uh, thing on the checklist that you still need to knock off before we get to January? There's not so much something that we need, but uh, we have stayed very active, uh, both within the state with modernizing the system, but also on the national level. So we have several things, uh, very significant uh, 
things underway. One here within the state, our SOLO system, that's a single online location program in the business and licensing uh, arena, is, is pretty much groundbreaking uh, intelli- you know, using the modern technology to help businesses uh, get online, answer their questions, and so on. Consistent, the right answers, you know, as opposed to if you just call in and uh, get somebody, you may get a new employee who's only been on the job for six months or whatever, and they're going to give a different answer than somebody who's been there 20 years working the ins and outs of the business. But when you go to this online location, we've we've geofenced things within the, 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 um, the West Virginia Code, the business experience of these people that have been around for 20 years, uh, gone through the lawyers and all that sort of thing. So I'm very proud of that continuing to improve that. We're working with artificial intelligence to see how we can improve uh, state government. So that's an ongoing project and will far outlive my, my term in office. But we're also on the national stage. We have led a coalition of states to push back against Biden's executive order for he's tried to turn all 600 federal agencies into voter registration centers. And uh, that's far, that's contrary to the U.S. Constitution that says the these elections shall be left to the state legislatures. This is a state legislature uh, initiative where they allow us to register people to vote or go through the DMV, but you shouldn't be able to go you know, get your fishing license and also you know, whatever, register uh, at your local whatever, or board of education or DHHR or all the different agencies. If the legislature wants to do that, they can but it shouldn't come down from the federal government and make us do that. And so uh, about eight or nine states have pushed back uh, against this. Well, 15 states, we did this three years ago. We pushed back 15 states, joined us, and now eight states have pushed back again in a lawsuit. We filed an amicus brief for the U.S. Supreme Court. I'll brag on my lawyer. Dave Cook wrote an excellent amicus brief, did go to the Supreme Court, and we're hoping in September uh, they will take up the case and – uh, our amicus is puts up some pretty fine points about this whole initiative and why it's contrary to the U.S. Constitution. So there's, we're also working with Facebook and Google and some of these large companies to try to make social media fair in the elections arena. Um, so there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that uh, aren't uh, being talked about, but it may have significant impact uh, for fair elections across the United States. Matt, good to talk with you this morning. Thank you so much for your time. Always great being with you guys. Thanks. Have a great day. Take care.